Hello, I welcome you all in this course on power plant engineering. Today, we will discuss another non-conventional of energy source that uh, wind energy. In wind energy, we will start with the wind power. What is wind power? Then history of wind energy has very interesting history. Classification of wind machine, wind data, wind data are very typical and a statistical method of generating uh, uh, wind data, energy in wind, performance calculation and concluding remark about the wind energy. In India, the wind energy has limited sources because it is a uh, India subcontinent or the India country as a country, three sides it is, uh, it has uh, ocean. So, near the Uh, this uh, ocean boundary here, we can have the wind power is somewhere in the central India also there is a possibility of the wind power. So, possibility of wind power are limited in our country, but it is another non-conventional energy source. Now, the, the wind, how the wind is caused first of all, let us understand the mechanics of the wind, uh, how the winds are generated. Now, winds are generated because the solar radiation is not uniform on the earth surface, right. So, and <coughs> in the night, in, in one part of the earth, there is night, there is no solar radiation and other half of the earth, there are solar radiation and these radiations, they keep on changing with time and with date. So, this causes difference in density of the fluid or the density of the air or pressure difference and this pressure difference drives the wind. Uh, now, this movement of the wind is also not very predictable. This movement of the wind keeps on changing. It is like solar radiations throughout the day, we will have different wind velocities and throughout the year also we will have different wind velocities. But if you go by the probabilistic model, there is a probability of uh, predicting the solar radiation is, 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 is I mean very close to the real uh, the real world if you compare with the probability of wind. So, wind is if you compare the predictability of the wind and the solar, the wind is more unpredictable, right. So, these are the factors, these are the I mean riders uh, which uh, restrict the use of the wind power. Wind is a diluted power, right and it is more diluted than the solar power. So, that is why if you look at the wing. Uh, 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 wind power plants, wind power plants, they are huge in size, they are huge in size, so that there is a continuous supply of the power, right. They normally, uh, the, the, the fan or the wings, they normally move with, let us say, the rotor, which normally moves with the 30 rpm, 28 rpm, 40 rpm, 45 rpm. So, RPM are less. So, that is why the plant has to be big, bulk of the fluid has to be handled in order to gen, uh, generate the power. Now, wind has, wind power has a very interesting history. Wind power in old days, maybe 1000 to 1200 AD, during this period, it was not used for power generation, but wind power was definitely used for some other purpose, mainly for sailing the ships. That is where the one of the major uh, application of wind power was sailing the ship, sailing ships or pumping water, crush, crushing some material. For this purpose, wind mills were used and the earliest uh, wind mill mills were Dutch wind mills, Dutch wind mills. They have uh, typical uh, windmills with horizontal shaft had four blades. Now, these windmills when, when the Dutch they started spreading their business and it is it, it is spread th throughout the world and it came to US in uh, around 1700 and after that enormous development took place <laughs> in this technology of uh, solar solar wind power generation. These solar power, for, sorry, not solar for wind power generation. So the wind turbines they are horizontal rotor; they are with vertical rotor also. There are two typical geometries: Sivonius type of uh, uh, blade arrangement. It is nothing but two cylinders. 
if you take a cylinder cut into two pieces and you fix those pieces over a shaft. So, this type of arrangement is known as uh, Savonius type of arrangement. Another is Darius type. In Darius type of arrangement, it is the blade side like, like uh, egg beater, no, the omelet, if we use beater for the for making the omelet out of the eggs. So, it is of that shape, beater shape. And this is also a one of the configuration which is used for wind power generation. The benefit of the wind power is does not pollute the atmosphere, not pollute, right. Fuel is not required, no fuel, right. <coughs> of course, it is renewable. Say as long as the earth survives, wind will be there, sun will survive approximately 10 to power 11 years. So, we do not have to bother whether it is a solar energy or the wind energy, we do not have to bother about the source. Small scale, if you go for a small scale, it is cheap, but if you go for the large scale, it is comparable with the conventional power plants. The drawback, the major drawback of this is effective fluctuations. it is fluctuating because the wind velocity does not remain same. So, it keeps on fluctuating that is a uh, major drawback. Storage device is needed in the form in a battery or some other device which is which can be used for a storage of the energy and wind it because it is, it is a gaseous fluid. So, it makes a lot of noise. Not lot of noise, but noise considerable noise is there. So, when the, if you go near the windmills, you will find there is a noise, uh, we can call it a noise pollution also. Now, uh, a sort of no, a noise pollution also. Classification of machines, first of all horizontal and vertical. So, when the machine is horizontal, there can be two arrangements, this side there are blades, air is entering from this side and air is coming from this side. There can be two arrangements, <laughs> there is a multi blade type of system, in multi blade on a rotor there are plates and there are number of blades which are fixed on the rotor, this is known as multi blade type of system, right. Sivonius, I have already explained the, the, the two cylinders cut in half pieces, we can have four also, but it is a half circle of a cylinder, they are fixed on the shaft and the wind is blown and uh, so shaft is vertical. When the wind is blown this these cylinders because pressure difference is developed between the leading and the tailing edge and that is that causes the movement of the cylinder in rotational <laughs> direction. Their other type is <laughs> Darius. There is also I explained you earlier and propeller type. So, propeller type it has airfoil type of shape of the blade and the number of the blade it varies from 3 to 4 to 5, they can go up to 6 to 8 also. So, they are different type of machines based on the basically based on the uh, configuration of the blades. Now, if you take a multi blade type of machine, typical multi blade, I will give you an idea. Suppose the capacity is 2 megawatt, 2.1 megawatt, it is multi blade type of system. In a multi blade out system where capacity is 2.1 megawatt, that will have a dia of 88 meters. It is very common in wind windmills, the diameter of the order of 175 feet or 200 feet. So, it is this is 88 meters cut in wind speed, cut in speed. This is wind speed that is 3 to 4 meters per second, another is cut out. 
25 meters per second. It means if the speed of the wind is less than 3 meters per second, the turbine will not generate power. And when the cutout speed with the speed is 25 more than 25 meters per second, that may damage the turbine, so turbine will not generate the power. Right? Hub height is 80 meters. Height of the single story is a house is approximately 3 meters, 3 to 4 meters. So, 20 25 meter it is the height may be up to 20 25 storied building, right? And now power control. It is by blade pitching, right? So you can imagine the size of a multi-blade turbine where the capacity, which is generating two mega two point one megawatt, the diameter of the blade, I mean, is eighty-eight meters. Cut in speed, cut out speed, and how about it is it? So it's a quite huge structure for generating such a power. Now what happens in uh, wind energy that is a major restriction is the variation in the wind velocity. So, wind data are very important, right. If you take for example, if you collect the data for a duration of 5 hours and normally the speed is 8 meters per second. So, you will not find a constant speed, the speed will keep on changing and you will have to take average of this speed and you will have to take account into account the range of this speed also, right. So, we have generated data speed versus time in minutes. So, 5, five minutes we have say, taken the what is the variation in wind speed. Normally, what we do we take average of 2 hours, average of 2 hours is done and frequency a graph is plotted in frequency right that is uh, and wind speed hour per year frequency hour per year and wind wind speed on this side so wind speed let us go up let, let us assume it goes up to 60 meters per second which is rare right and it starts from zero so, let us say for 200 hours it remains 0, uh, for, for uh, 200 hours it remains 0 and there is then 2 to hours we can have a graph like this frequency graph. Because you know, what we are doing we are trying to represent the wind data in a scientific manner, so that some useful information can be drawn which can be used for uh, generating the wind power. Now, with this 2 hour average, we can draw the cumulative frequency curve. So, if you draw the cumulative frequency curve, it is going to be like this 0 to it is 8760 9000, right. So, cumulative frequency curve is going to be like this it is not a straight line, it may be a curve also, right, it's kilometers per hour. So, duration. So, kilo, this for this high, suppose it is uh, yeah, meter per second, let us say meter per second, this high meter per second, the duration is 0, right. And then the speed is reducing and for 0 meter per second, there has to be some so, it is a, a cumulative type of frequency we are getting here and because in a year there are 8760 hours, right. So, for 8760 hours we will get a cumulative frequency curve and now this curve can decide in which part of the curve we have to design our turbine. So, this is cut in and this is cut out, we will discuss this later on, right. Let us switch to the statistical methods. Now, there are certain statistical methods because we cannot have wind data everywhere for every place. So, there has to be some statistical methods to 
uh, have idea about the profile of the wind. So, there is a distribution this is known as Weeble distribution. Now, the distribution of the wing pattern, the distribution pattern of the wind velocity is normally very close to the prediction of the Weeble distribution and that says function of velocity is equal to k by c v by c k minus 1 exponential minus v by c raised to power k. So, this is a probability density function k is the shear factor c is the scale factor right. Now, if I want to have cumulative distribution that is going to be f v 0 to f u d u sorry this is f u d u is equal going to be 1 minus e x p raised to power k. So, this is cumulative uh, uh, frequency distribution. If you compare the pattern of the wing, wing pattern it matches very closely matches with this uh, distribution. Now, for example, for a new site average velocity is going to be equal to 1 by n v i i is equal to 1 to n. Then n can be hours or days and there are two things in any statistical distribution there are two things one is average another is standard deviation is going to be n minus 1 sigma v minus v average whole square i is equal to 1 and i is equal to n. If I mean these are the two values if these two values are with us we can easily find <laughs> the distribution of the wind pattern. Now, v bar is equal to c lambda 1 plus 1 by k and this is equal to v bar square uh, gamma function 1 plus 1 by k divided by gamma function square 1 plus 1 by k this is 2 by k minus 1 <coughs> right. So, these are certain statistical distribution which can be used for predicting the uh, wind pattern in any locality. Now, energy in the wind Now, energy in the wind, the one term is power density. Power density. So, wind has kinetic energy that is half m v square and m dot is the mass flow rate. Now, if we take the mass flow rate, then half uh, mass flow rate is the density into volumetric flow rate, volumetric flow rate v square v is the velocity small v is the volume. So, power is equal to half rho a v into v square. Now, power by area is equal to half rho v cube right this is known as power density power per unit area. Now, similarly there is energy density. energy density is energy per unit area. So, we will integrate 0 to t p by a d t is equal to half rho 0 to t v cube d t. Now, hourly energy hourly energy contained. So, E m divided by a is equal to half rho i is equal to 1 and i is equal to hour is equal to v i cube 
del 30. So, this is hourly and if you want to do monthly, we simply take monthly data, right. <laughs> there is a power law also, <laughs> if you move to a height, the velocity will change, right and there is a power law that is velocity is equal to z raised to power alpha. So, V 2 by V 1 is, is proportional to, is, so V 2 by V 1 is proportional to z 2 by z 1 raised to power alpha. This is valid up to the height of 100 to 150 meters, not more than that and the value of alpha is 0 0.1 to 0 0.4. So, normally if you go to the field, it is smooth, field is smooth, it is 0 0.1, right. If there is a rough terrain and there is a jungle, right, it, it rural woods, it can be up to 0 0.2. If you come to the cities, in cities it can be 0 0.3 to 0 0.4, right. So, this is the power law for the height. Now, let us go back to the <coughs> design of a wind turbine, because wind turbine, every power generating system has to be designed for a particular RPM and it is effective in a particular range only. So, if we take the cumulative frequency like this, power density power divided by density and this is hours and 8760, uh, right. So, this is cut in speed and this is cut out speed, right. Uh, this is suppose this is cut in speed and this is cut out speed. So, this much is available it's still because we want to have less fluctuations, we will sacrifice this part also. So, effectively this is the part which is available with us for the design of a typical uh, machine or the typical wind turbine, right. Now, for judging the performance of a wind turbine performance calculation, there is a performance coefficient because normally the performances are judged through the coefficient. So, performance coefficient that is the electrical power generated divided by half rho a v infinite q. v infinite is the normal velocity of the wind which is passing through the turbine and there is a lift coefficient C l. It is equal to lift force divided by half rho a b uh, this is v infinity square. there is a drag force C d, it is F d half rho a b v infinity square and tip speed ratio that is lambda omega r by v w, that is known as tip speed ratio. Or normally we call it speed ratio. Now, There is a solid ratio also or uh, solidity ratio, not solid ratio, solidity ratio. And solidity ratio is N c upon pi r. It is the ratio of the blade area, suppose in a turbine, part of the circumference is blocked with the blades. So, it is the blade area and total frontal area that is known as the solidity ratio. If it is the entire disk, then a solidity ratio is 1. And n here, n is the number of blades, and c is the mean chord length, chord, chord length of the blade, right. <coughs> and there is a term epsilon, it is lift drag coefficient by lift coefficient. This epsilon is very important parameter in designing a uh, uh, wind turbine. The C O max
or 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 we can say the CP maximum power coefficient can be calculated as 16 by 27 exponential minus 0 0.3538 lambda raised to power minus 1.2946. Now, if you take into drawing it, this is a, a, a simple formula. The, this formula was proposed by Langster Bells. Langster Bells. Now, here the drag is not taken into the account drag because when there is a rotation in the uh, turbine hub drag will also develop. So, the C p is going to be coefficient of power is going to be 16 by 27 E x p minus 0 0.3538 lambda raised to power minus 1.2946 minus epsilon lambda. That is why epsilon is very important in judging the performance of any turbine. It is valid only for when lambda is greater than 1 and epsilon is in the range of 0 point epsilon is in the range of uh, 0 0.008 to 0 0.2. This is valid for that only. Now, if <laughs> we take into the account then and if we draw the graph between C p and tip speed ratio lambda and coefficient of power coefficient C p. C p is power coefficient and this is tip velocity ratio and this is 0 0.6. We get a graph like this and when the value of drag coefficient L epsilon, this is epsilon, now this is epsilon is equal to 0 0.01 and when epsilon keeps on increasing, uh, suppose no, not like this. It is curves are like this, and we are getting maximum here. And for this maximum value, we have. use this equation. We can have from if you look at this equation, we can have the maximum value of uh, 16 by 27, 16 by 27 and this 16 by 27, this 16 by 27 it turned out to be 0 0.593. So, this maxima cannot be is more than 0 0.6 or it will remain 0. 593, right. But as the value of epsilon will keep on increasing, the value of epsilon keep on increasing, this performance is start going down, okay. Now, variation of power coefficient C p with tip speed ratio C p with tip speed ratio lambda. So, propeller type of turbine it is okay, it goes like this. Savonius, this is 0 0.6, but if you look at the Savonius, it will be something like this, it will go up to 0 0.3. Now, if you go for the high speed propeller, it will be, so this is 8, we can go up to 10. So, high speed on this is uh, 0 0.5. High speed blade will be falling somewhere here, Darius will be falling somewhere here, Savonius will be falling somewhere here, but the propeller will give you this performance. So, depending upon the application, we can go for different type of turbines. So, in all the cases, power coefficient passes through a maxima, we will getting maximum in all the cases and the propeller type is covering a vast range, right. And seven year type of uh, for for low uh, lambda and and Darius type of is used for the high.
high value of lambda right uh, now the concluding remark now concluding remark for uh, the wind uh, energy is it can be stored as is stored as solo sol or solo or sol and cluster they can be uh, installed in a cluster also and you must have seen on the seashores there are there are cluster of uh, windmills site selection is very important in case of uh, wind power site selection right operation and control operation and control grid connection and safety also because they are huge if uh, 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 structures so safety is also uh, important now there are two types of machines there is fixed fixed machines and another is variable speed nowadays variable speed are becoming uh, common because if you go for the variable speed then you can trap energy in a greater range of uh, wind energy fixed type of machine you have to sacrifice certain uh, range of the wind energy so variable speed type the control is complicated and they are costly also but in spite of the fact nowadays the manufacturers are going for the uh, variable speed type of machines the another risk is the risk for the birds these uh, the windmills are their risk for the world birds land uses is also because they need a lot of land area noise is also an issue with the uh, wind turbine and electromagnetic interference this is also uh, issue with the uh, wind turbines but nowadays the, the the application of or the use of wind turbines is increasing as it is a non conventional energy source and it does not require any uh, i mean the recurring cost is low if you compared with the con uh, conventional system the fixed cost may be high but the, uh, the 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 recurring cost is definitely low for the wind power systems that is all for today thank you very much